SpaceX is moving at light speed to get the capability to conduct the first Starship orbital flight as soon as possible. However, the biggest concern with the SpaceX team now is how to make a capture system that can adapt to the expected variation in landing location and safely absorb the shock of landing and transfer the load to the ground. Catching the Super Heavy will be like catching an egg. There's really so many problems with this. Let's analyze everything about it in today's episode of Alpha Tech. First, we'll dive into why SpaceX is trying to catch Super Heavy instead of landing Super Heavy. Isn't landing easier than catching such a big object? Back in December of 2020, SpaceX engineers planned to land the booster like the company's Falcon 9 rocket, which has retractable landing legs. However, the founder of SpaceX, Elon Musk, changed the Super Heavy rocket booster design. It will not feature landing legs anymore. SpaceX now plans to catch the booster instead of landing it on the ground. Musk tweeted, We're going to try to catch the Super Heavy booster with the launch tower arm using the grid fins to take the load. Saves mass and cost of legs and enables immediate repositioning of the booster onto the launch mount, ready to refly in under an hour. Indeed, weight is the enemy of spacecraft. Legs would certainly work, but the best part is no part. Best step is no step. In general, every extra pound of the rocket is a pound of payload you don't get to launch. It's even more complicated than when you're talking about multi-stage vehicles. But figure it out as a rough rule of thumb. And rockets are already about 90% fuel, so you have to be as weight frugal with that remaining 10% as possible. The legs of the Falcon 9 weigh about 4,500 pounds. That right there is a medium-sized satellite that's not going to orbit. The legs on a Super Heavy would probably be on the order of four to five times heavier, so if they can successfully get rid of those, that's a heck of a weight savings. In addition, rapid turnaround is essential for the Super Heavy because if they can land it, refuel it, and stack another Starship on top of it more quickly, you don't need as many Super Heavy launchers, and you don't need as many launch pads. When SpaceX is seriously into getting that Mars base established, They'll be launching hundreds of starships and probably thousands of orbital fuel tankers over the course of a month or two leading up to the Earth-Mars alignment every two years. Therefore, you see, catching a starship is definitely a better idea. However, it doesn't make it any easier. In fact, it's even more insanely difficult. You can imagine what it would be like to catch a 24-story building plummeting to the ground in midair. Even though Super Heavy will be able to hover, unlike Falcon 9, doing that doesn't make sense because while you're hovering, you're constantly fighting 1G of gravity and you're not going anywhere, so you're wasting propellant. All the propellant you're wasting while hovering you need to bring with you during launch. That extra propellant mass needs even more propellant to push it up through the atmosphere and against gravity, which needs more propellant. According to Musk, the launch tower and its three mobile arms would play a critical role in all aspects of orbital Starship launches. The first arm swings out to brace Super Heavy for Starship installation and connect the upper stage to power, propellant, supplies, and other launch pad utilities. A more exotic pair of arms, nicknamed chopsticks, has a more complex job. On top of using the chopsticks to lift, stack, and demate starships and Super Heavy boosters in almost any weather and wind condition, SpaceX wants the arms to act as an incredibly complex and precarious rocket recovery system. For a booster or starship catch, the rocket will approach the tower, enter the gap between the splayed arms, hover in place while the arms close around it, and eventually come to rest on hard points that appear to offer about as much surface as a coffee table. Based on a simulation of the process shown by Elon Musk, calling it a catch is a misnomer, as the arms will mainly move in one direction, one dimension, open and close, and can't actually grab the rocket in any real sense. As built and shown, they're closer to a tiny fixed landing platform capable of minor last-second positional adjustments. Eventually, the chopsticks could shave a small amount of time off of post-recovery processing, removing the need for a crane or the same arms to attach to a landed booster or ship. They could also shave off the dry mass required for landing legs, though all interplanetary ships will still need legs. However, they will also inherently make proving their own efficacy a nightmare. 
By all appearances, the current recovery mechanism on the arms and landing hard points on ships and boosters mean that a catch could fail if either stage is more than a foot or two from the perfect bullseye or rotated a few degrees in the wrong direction. With the method SpaceX has devised, even the tiniest error could easily end with a massive, pressurized, partially fueled rocket destroying the chopsticks and plummeting a few hundred feet to the ground, guaranteeing an explosion that could damage surrounding infrastructure or start fires that might. In the event of larger anomalies during a landing attempt, Starship or Super Heavy could accidentally impact the launch tower, tank farm, damaging or even outright destroying the skyscraper-sized structure. Well, rebuilding the entire launch pad is not a one-year affair. The biggest problem is related to the FAA. The company took more than a year to wait for the license for the launch from this agency. However, when Starship explodes, the FAA must investigate its impact on the environment and everything around it. It's entirely feasible for there to be a delay of at least six months. SpaceX is making things even more dramatic when the first Mechazilla catching is also the first flight of Super Heavy. Well, we all know that even SpaceX Falcon 9 landings weren't a normal thing. In order to build up to that, SpaceX was first trying to prove the rocket could guide itself toward a target and come to a stop at almost an exact point. They had tried to do a soft water landing in 2013, but the Falcon 9 came in too fast and exploded on impact. This time, however, everything went just right and SpaceX was able to learn a lot from the first landing despite this. However, when it came to doing the real thing on a drone ship, SpaceX had many tries before they finally nailed a landing. The Falcon 9 first stage landing tests were a series of controlled descent flight tests conducted by SpaceX between 2013 and 2016. It was not until 2017 the first stage of Falcon 9 missions had been routinely landed if the rocket performance allowed it and if SpaceX chose to recover the stage. At least to some extent, SpaceX likely knows this and Super Heavy would likely need to be in excellent health and perform perfectly during the ascent and boost back portions of its launch debut to be cleared for a catch attempt. Ultimately, Starship's first orbital launch could end up being even more of a spectacle than it's already guaranteed to be. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Don't forget, share your ideas in the comments section. Your support motivates us to create more quality video. And for that, we thank you so much and hope to see you next time.